This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning. I'm Tim Apicella. I'm filling in for Jay Fidel. It's 11 o'clock. It's Friday. That means only one thing. It's Trump week. And with me is our co-host, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It is nice to be here. I'm glad to be here. Um, as always, regarding this topic of Trump Week, we've got more things coming out on the news than we know what to shake a stick at. Oh my gosh, yes. I was standing at the television going, I have to leave, I have to leave, I'll be late if I don't leave, but there was so much going on. Yeah, you gotta watch TV at the last second to yeah. find out what's going on. So it is still official, 35 days since the government shut down, but as of we were watching just before we came in the studio, right. uh, President Trump announced that he is going to suspend um, this stalemate, if you will. I actually have a quote up, from he's him. He's going to open up the government for till February the 15th. Yes. But one of the most important things is, well, maybe not for him or the Republicans, that there was no additional monies assigned to the wall or the border security. That's a big hit for him. It's a big hit, which we're going to talk about. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi you know, prevailed both in the State of the Union address um, stuff that went on and then also now because he has come to, I think it was mainly the TSA and the FAA that are the ones who really put the pressure on him that he cannot keep this going. Well, if you're flying in a plane this weekend, um, mm -hmm. you're thinking, you know, what are my chances of th something going wrong? Oh my and goodness. I think that given the number of flights we have every day in this country, uh, that's a lot right. of concern uh, passengers. Oh, goodness, yes. So I, I think that the TSA and, of course, the aviation issue right. is probably what really pushed this thing over. I would think so, too, because, you know, there was a bunch of, just recently, in the last couple days, anyway, there was a lot of airports that grounded the planes because they couldn't take I think off. LaGuardia did it today. LaGuardia, Newark, there's, I can't remember all the names of all the ones, but there was five or six of them that they mentioned this morning that had grounded the planes because too many of the um, air traffic controllers Call called in sick. sick. Yeah. They couldn't make it. Um, well, in political terms, they call this who blinked first. <laughs> and right. it is pretty apparent. But you know what? It doesn't matter who blinked first because right. we have 800,000 employees yes. that don't care who blinked first. Yes. They just want their money. Exactly. They just want their paycheck. They want to work. Right. They want their money. They want to pay their bills. They right. need to feed their families. And right. we'll talk about later in the show some of the you know, some of the horror stories that we've seen. Oh, my goodness, yes. You know, I have a quote Please. from his little announcement this morning, from Trump's announcement this morning. And this really struck me. So that's why I wrote this part down. As he says, as everyone knows, I had a very powerful alternative, but I didn't want to use it at this time. So then he went on to talk about the fact that on the 15th, if nothing has come about, he still has that in his back pocket to use. And of course, he's referring to declaring a state of national emergency. Right. And if he declares a state of emergency, that's just one very small step away from martial law. And that is, gives him all power. Well, what could very well happen me. between now and then is a, a recognition and an acknowledgement that there are several facets of government that can be opened up and operating other than TSA, national, you know. Right, um, yes. And, and so I think there would be, a, a, on both sides, a willingness to try to get these other departments, the IRS, Department of Agriculture, oh, yes. uh, you know, all these other very the, important agencies. The to, FDA, <clears throat> so we don't all get poisoned by our bad meat or something. You know, so if this really is over just, you know, TSA, border security, um, there are a couple agencies that can be dedicated to that, and maybe they don't uh, right. open up. But I, I think if, if this continues and we don't make any progress by February 15th, you're going to see a different type of government shutdown. You're not going right. to see something that we've just witnessed for the right. last I 35 agree. days. I agree. <clears throat> and that Trump was threatening another shutdown or using these very powerful alternatives. Let me ask you something. As he um, puts it. Don't you think, I mean, since... You know, he really has blinked first. Don't you think he would have used national emergency already if rather than would. rather than have to come to the podium in the Rose Garden? And basically, uh, this is the most contrite I've ever seen the president of the United States. I hate Al Gore Very contrite that. as he's mm -hmm. announcing the, right. the reopening of government. Don't you think he would have used it by now? 
Well, I think he knows that it is a last ditch effort kind of thing. And he has to have all of the pieces in place. There isn't a national emergency happening right now. So he can't use it right this minute. But then he also made a comment that there are 8,000 people already assembled and on their way to our border. There's been no evidence of that anywhere. There's no reporting that, you know, um, bears that out. So who knows, right? Well, Maybe and, he's and, waiting for and them and to be there. If you remember the discussion that many points were made, A, is there even the, the, you know, the legal possibility that this can be pulled off without being challenged? But two is the obvious is how much is coming across the border between Canada and the United States? Oh, right. Why is it just the southern border as the national emergency? Right. Um, you know, I mean, there are so many holes into this, you know, this proclamation of alternative. You know. Right. right. Power, yes, that he has such great, you know, alternative. Everyone knows. Very powerful alternative. But he didn't want to use it. So it's like he's trying to trump himself up to see what a great guy I am. I could have done this, but I didn't. And because he has to stand up and admit that he is sort of. But here we are, 35 Blinken days later. First. We're 35, 35 days later, days. and we're right back to where we started right. with no difference, right. no $5.7 billion on, right. you know, given from the Democrats to, to uh, President Trump's desire to build a wall or border security, whatever well, you want to we call it. See that? Now, that is a difference, though. Yeah, the that definition. Is a de the the definition. definition, the semantics the have semantic changed. Has morphed. Have changed into just... A Ballard uh, wall versus a wall. Right. Exactly. You know, there's a big difference a between wall, a powered wall and versus a wall. And a barrier. And now and he from says, a wall well, to a I never said concrete wall. I never said that. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing how um, right? we have shifting, shifting of what he said, what he meant versus what he now means and what he now says. Oh my gosh. Now I have a bunch of those things here that I printed <laughs> out because there's a fact checking. Um, it's called AP Fact Check on, and you can really check what it is that he has said. So, Trump, on the number of immigrants living in the U.S. illegally, I used to hear 11 million all the time. It would always stay right at 11. I said, does it ever increase or go down? Nope, it's 11. Well, it's nowhere close to 30 million or 35 million, according to his own Homeland Security Secretary, um, as well as other independent estimates. So all of these things, the coyotes are using children to gain access to this country. The comments of yesterday and today really strike me, um, being all about you know empowering women and protecting women's rights and victim services. To hear him talk in graphic detail about how women are being duct taped and thrown in the back seat, sometimes five or six of them, and they can't come across the border. Well, wait a minute, they're not coming across the border. They're, they're coming in through tunnels and through different ways. They're going on boats. There's all sorts you know, of different ways. His description is they're being duct taped and bound and gagged and thrown in the back seat of a car coming yes. into the desert areas. Yes. Rather yeah, than right. points they of entry. They just drive along and make a right. Or a left. Or, or a left. Yeah. <laughs> so, make a left. you know, here's what I kind of thought was odd about his, you know, his compassionate plea about the victimization of women and children. Right. I, he no sooner said that this morning and my attention went right to, well, what about the victimization of the zero tolerance policy where the children are taken from the moms? Yes. What about that victimization? What about that So why is that a one-sided victimization versus looking at victimization on a right. more global uh, approach? And where are those thousand kids that were separated? You know, they, they really did know? not put them yeah. all back. Where yeah. they? Do we really know where they are? No, we don't. We don't know how they've Absolutely been reunified with their parents? Absolutely don't. No, and we know that they have not been because there are parents still clamoring for their children. Yeah. People that have been deported back and then are coming back up to the border to say, I want my child. Yeah. And that's what's striking to me. Same thing like you said, yeah. yeah. I, you know, again, I, I, I'm very, very pleased to hear this announcement because yes. we, we're talking about, we'll talk about some of the horror stories that right. have played out in the last 35 days, and there are so many. 800,000 of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I am really, really pleased to hear this announcement. Right. But at the same time, I'm just thinking, how can we have this, this antithesis or these messages of dichotomy where right. we just hear one thing and then on the, the next two sentences, it just seems to contradict, you know, the, the previous statement. Right. Um, I think one of the things that we should look at now is very similar to what happened 35 days ago, where remember the president of the United States agreed to pass uh, the right? House and Senate bill right. to avoid a shutdown, 
And right. he said, I will pass it. And then guess who he talked to? Right. He talked to Rush Limbaugh <laughs> and, and Coulter. Coulter. And all of a sudden... Or did he talk to them or did he just hear what they had to say? Probably just heard know? what they had who to knows? say. Could be on Fox and Friends, who knows? Right. But the bottom line is that message somehow got through and he, he reversed 100, you know, 180. Right. Said I'll do it himself, and then says, nope, not going to do and it. not going to do it. You so amazing now the question Rono is, said now that where too. we are today, where are we are today, right. what's going to be said by Rush Limbaugh and Coulter and company? Fox and Friends, right. I don't know where he's getting all his, you know, juicy tidbits of where he's in trouble with his base or not, but we'll see what they say and we'll see if this shifts again. Right, because it might. Maisie Hirono, that's another um, quote that I got, because it's our own Maisie Hirono, right? And right. she stands up to him on a regular basis, which is one of the reasons why I love her so much. She speaks the truth. She is a truth teller. And she says, we've seen this before with DACA, right? The White House says yes, that's right. then changes his mind and says no. He agreed to a path for citizenship for DACA, and then he rescinds it and says, no, you know, I'll give you three years. And what is that? They've already got that from the courts anyway. You know, remember that, um, that, that the Democrats committed to $25 billion. Yes, in the beginning. $25 billion with the DACA provisions. So right. now we're at 5.6. What a negotiator. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry going to say down, that, but how do you go yes, from 25 in no. the pocket to 5.7, you know, not in the pocket. I, you know, I right. just... I don't understand it either. It's, I think it has to do with his ego all... You know, uh, all jumbled up inside his head with what he thinks he should do, and then hears it from someone else. He's so. Um, well, this is what I had to tell some people. Sorry. It's not ready, <laughs> aim, fire. It's you know, I mean, it is ready, aim, fire. It's not ready, fire, aim. Okay, so um, I like we that. see that we see that a lot. Ready, fire, aim. Right. And I yeah. think he does a lot of that, and I think. His staff and those in, you know, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan at the time were saying, wait, whoa, wait a minute. You, right. you, you got too far ahead of us on some of your things that you've agreed to. Right. You didn't talk to us about it. And I think that's where we were 35 days ago. Right. And I think that's potentially where we could be again today. Um, well, it's I don't think he's going to backtrack on this one. I don't think he can. I don't think he can either. So but, that's good news because um, that means people are going back to work. I mean, yeah, he's set up in the Rose Garden and he told everybody they're going back to work. Right. Yeah. So that's, I think, the important part. I don't think he's going to go back on this one. And like you said, I don't think he can. I, you know, I hold Mitch McConnell pretty responsible in some of this, too, because they had bipartisan bills that had been passed by the House and passed in the Senate in December. It's not like it was done six months ago. This is last month. Right. They all agreed across the board in the House and the Senate. And then Mitch McConnell refused to let it come to the to the floor for well, a vote. Yeah, I mean, that really did change the nature of what the Constitution has defined Congress right. for as exactly. equal balances. Exactly. Equal, you know, so, we can't do it unless the president I mean, says that, it's okay. I mean, of all the things what? that shocked me is Mitch McConnell's, you know, basically kowtowing to the president of the United States right. and forgetting his duty, his duty to the American people, to the, Amer to the Constitution. And to the Constitution. I hate exactly. to say that, but I mean, that doesn't usually happen. So no. let's just take a quick step back on. You know, what transpired before today? And I think one of the, <clears throat> the bigger ones was the last, the last Senate vote. Right. Here you had six senators of yes. the Republican Party. I got the numbers. Well, I, I like to say the party you of got Trump. The, I, you got all the numbers, I, I got yeah, too. <laughs> I, 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 I'm reluctant and hesitant to say the Republican Party anymore because I think it's the party of Trump. I think the Republican Party as we knew it, as we know it, um, that's been put in a, in a closet somewhere. It's on temporary hiatus. Right. But let's talk about those, those, those senators that crossed the aisle to get this government opened up. Right. Um, that would be Lamar Alexander from Tennessee, Susan Collins from Maine, Corey Gardner from Colorado, Mitt Romney from Utah, Lisa Murkowski from Alaska, and Johnny Iles um, Ileson from uh, Georgia. And Tennessee and Georgia, those are two really big ones because they have never gone over. They have not really, you know, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, you know, they kind of, um, they <clears> seem <throat> to be more moderates. But those two, Tennessee and Georgia, those guys are pretty extreme 
you know, right. So that's pretty telling. Well, this goes back to also, you know, the effects of the, you know, the shutdown just didn't hit the pocketbooks of federal employees. It hit the pocketbooks of all the ancillary services, Absolutely. mom and pop grocery stores and coffee shops right. and everything that services federal employees and, and relies on them, their revenue. So it becomes my revenue. Right. And guess what? That got shut down. And there's a lot right. of states that are Republican states that had a lot of, you know, federal workers in those states. Absolutely. I agree with that one. And then here he's telling, he, Trump is telling the people, yes, yeah. this is yesterday, that they should just be able to go to their bank and get a loan. Well, we're going to talk about or, some of these obtuse comments. Go, yes. When okay. we come back from this break, which okay. we're going to take, we're going to talk about exactly that. Okay. I'm Tim Apicella here with Cynthia Lee Sinclair. This is Trump Week, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. We're back. It's Trump week. <laughs> we were just talking about the shutdown, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more because that's the topic of the day. So, Cynthia, you had mentioned during the break about, um, we were talking yeah. about the Republicans that actually voted to open up the government. Um, that was for the Democratic bill. They came across for the Democratic That's bill. That's correct. But Trump's bill, one of the Democrats actually voted for it. And so who's that? That was uh, Senator Manchin. Okay. Well, I could guess why. Okay. Um, he's basically <laughs> senator in a very, very dark purple red state. Yes. So you will see him often if... If the vote is not going to sway one way or the other, and they didn't have their 60 votes on this. Not even so close. So it was, so anytime there's a chance where he can vote Republican, he will do so. Right. Unless it's a tie break type of situation, then he will vote the way he's going to vote. But the bottom line is, he'll, you, you'll see him do that often. Oh, okay. And so. So it was, for the Trump bill, it was 50 Republicans to 47 Democrats. And for the Democratic bill, it was 52 Republicans and 44 Democrats. Yeah. Um, and so there were six Republicans involved in that 44 vote. Right. Which so is it's, pretty amazing. So it's, you know, you see the cracks forming in this last 35 days. The, crack, the cracks slowly were getting wider and wider and wider. But I think one of the things that really pushed it over, not only, um, you know, the flight safety risks, you know, going to all the airports and getting well, in the air. grounding the planes. Right, they can't grounding fly the planes. Now. Um, I think, and then you see the senators starting to drift away from, uh, you know, a solid right. block of vote. Versus but I think only also six, who knows what's what next. What we started to see was what I call the, because we don't help, you know, they're not holding press conference anymore. When was the last time you saw a press conference? A long time ago, right? Right. So that means all these agency heads are starting to speak about the topic. Well, guess what? Some of them have no business getting in front of a camera. And right. so what we start seeing is um, people making these horribly insensitive comments about those who have been laid off. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll just go just through a couple of them. Just go get a loan. Go to the grocery store. You yeah. Trump saying so, that. You know, even before the, the, the shutdown, um, when um, President Trump went to the Rose Garden, I, I distinctly remember this. A reporter said, Mr. President, what about the safety net for these employees if, they, you know, if they're furloughed or they're, you know, they're not going right. to get a paycheck? And President Trump looked at the reporter and said, you mean the safety net, the wall, that safety? Because you know, we're making America safe again. And so here was the, the reporter talking about a safety net to take care of the families right. and you know, the fact that they don't have a paycheck to pay their bills. And, and Donald Trump took that opportunity to say, the wall is their safety. Right. And he tied it back into the wall, completely dismissing what's going to you know, happen and did happen in the, you know, the forthcoming 35 days. Right. So there's, you know, there's the this opening salvo of, of kind of an obtuse look at 
the impact to the, um, these federal employees. Always throughout, when he says things like, just go to your bank and get a loan. They well, that was, that they're was, going along. He said the banks are going along. The grocery stores are going along. Yeah, Those and were then, his exact words. And, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding well, me. And landlords will go along. Don't worry about it. Landlords yeah, the landlords go are going, they're all going along. Everybody's going along because yeah, well, everybody's that, behind not this Not so much, not wall, so much. Which is really not true And at then all. we had Wilbur Ross, uh, um, you know, talk about statements of lack of empathy. He, he said, and you know, if you watch the statements, I don't really understand why they're going to food banks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, and then he started, you know, going on. Well, they can get a loan, like a thirty-day payday loan. Right. God why knows can't what they? the interest rates are at those forty-five percent, oh, fifty percent. So horrible. I mean, they're hor it's ridiculous. They, they should are. be illegal, as far as I'm concerned. I agree. A thirty-day payday loan should be illegal. So here's <laughs> Wilbur Ross going. Well, first off, I don't know why they're going to food banks. I have no idea why they would do that. And then. What's the big deal? They could just go get a 30 day, you know, he didn't say 30 day pay, payday right. loan, but he's saying they can get, you know, basically a loan, a short term right. loan based off their paycheck. Right. I mean, just, how obtuse is that? Crazy. That's obtuse. There were lines down the streets for the food banks in Washington, D.C., and they were liking it to what it was like in Russia back in the day when everyone would have to stand in the food lines, you know, and it it's pathetic. like, what is this? This is America. Yeah, it, it was There's no excuse for this. Yeah. Um, and then later you had Larry Kudlow, right. you know, he's the director oh of economic gosh. council. He was talking about, you know, how everyone's chipping in to, you know, cause they support the president and right. that they're basically volunteering. <laughs> um, you know, they're volunteering. And then the reporter said, well, you can't be a volunteer when you're forced to work and get no pay. That's not volunteering. No, and he just not. said, you know, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Um, but so you're seeing examples of, of high level officials being right. so blind to the plight of these federal workers. And of course, you know, like I said before, it's not just the federal workers, but it's all the businesses that support the federal oh, workers. Oh, goodness, There's, yes. You had uh, Laura. Um, oh, my gosh, I saw that Laura that came on and said all that. Laura Trump yes. came on and said that. Yeah. Um, They'll just suffer for a little, a little while, bit. and a they don't bit. mind, and it's worth it for. It's for the good what, of the country. It's the good of the country. Well, you know, this is being, you know, you've seen it being parlayed to let them eat cake kind yeah, of oh my attitude. Goodness. Yes, and it's just, I think so. That's another, um, that's another element of why we are where we're at right now, where Trump right. has blinked, because right. it's a combination. It's never one thing, you know. It's, it's right. always something right, else. Right. And so you're just seeing a, one thing after another after another kind of pile up. And then, of course, right. you're seeing the polls. Oh, the, the polls are supposed to be. And he keeps ball. a close eye on those polls, right? Yes, he does. That's what we've been told anyway. <laughs> so. so when you look at this, you, you say, okay, how did, you know, how did we actually get to the 35 days? And now why is he backing down? Why did he blink? Well, I think it's, you're seeing a, a pyramid of things built on one another, and, and that's what's going on here. Right, and here Trump is still calling it an invasion of our country. It's not an invasion. He then, he then went on to say, this was yesterday, not today, not this morning's press release, but yesterday. And he says, I know more about technology than anybody. Saw that when quote. one of the reporters asked him about that, and I thought, of course he does. Well, <laughs> he no sooner said, I know more about technology than anyone. First, I'd like to invite him here on... Uh, think Tech Hawaii to oh, see yes, if that's please. really true. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> so, Come on, dude. we got a lot of really savvy tech people here. We could test them. Um, I but think I, it'd be great. I, th <laughs> I thought it was interesting to have that no sooner coming out of his mouth. He goes, because we have cameras on the wall. Yes. Okay, so cameras is the latest and greatest in the technology, I suppose. And uh, no, I think there's more not. to it than yeah, that. Yeah, there's quite a bit more that <laughs> they could do. <laughs> um, quite a bit more they could do. So how do you think Nancy Pelosi came out of this whole, um, this whole thing? Doing very well. She stuck to her guns. She she made a line in the sand and she didn't erase it. And you know, working with domestic violence victims, and I know this is a little different, but not really. When you stand up to your abuser, you draw a line in the sand. If you erase that line even once, then they will never ever respect that line again. Yeah. And I think that's what she established with all of this, was she drew a line in the sand and she refused to erase it. Well, one of the memorable lines was, they were talking about what did the down payment mean? What was, <laughs> what was in the context? Yeah, what is the down payment? And she said, as she's walking down the hallway, I'm not sure he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and you know, see these, these little vignettes, these little moments right. that are priceless, 
But unfortunately, you know, they all, again, they all kind of right. add up. Yeah, they and do. And it makes him look not so great. So I think that's, again, another reason why he knows he's not winning the public relations war on this. And that's why we're, he's backing down. Right. So, okay, well, we need to move on because we got to talk about two very important developments. Like One Roger is, Stone? Roger Stone, the, <laughs> the, the arrest and indictment of Roger yes, Stone. Yes, one more. And how many are there now? Let's see, I think I wrote it down, right? We've got 13, right, that have pled, either pled guilty and are sentenced or have been indicted. Uh, one, two, have been sentenced. Manafort guilty on eight counts. So uh, there's 13 Trump team that so, have been indicted. So in this big witch hunt... Um, it seems to me they've caught a few witches. Yes, they have caught a bunch of witches. They uh, have. <laughs> and that's a lot. That, those numbers you just read, that's, that's that a significant a lot, number. That is right. So we'll see now, because the Robert Mueller does depend a lot on what Roger Stone knows and that connection to WikiLeaks. Well, he and, said today he will not say one word. He says, I am, Stone and Restless has nothing, oh, this was, sorry, that was Sarah Sanders. She says, the stone arrest has nothing to do with Trump and nothing to do with the White House. That was her official statement this okay. morning. It's like, okay. As their um, prerogative to say, essay as such, that's a prerogative. One of the things that really struck me when Stone mm -hmm. came out and finally gave his little um, speech about what he thought about all this, of course, he you know, professed his innocence, that, you know, I'm not guilty. I will never say anything against the president. He's one of my oldest friends. And then he goes on to say um, that he will not lie to make his position more better, more, more attainable, excuse yeah. me, um, better. Uh, um, at any rate, so when he said this, it was a very, not very thinly veiled, uh, obviously pointing to Cohen and the fact that they're all trying to claim that he's lying to try to save himself. Well, he may not be getting out then anytime soon, would he? No. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll post bail. So, um, okay. So, well, we wait. Have... Who's posting bail? Because he already posted bail. As far as are you talking about Stone? Stone. Stone. Stone has already posted bail. Yeah, Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Of course he has. Yeah. For bail, and they, he's already posted it. Yeah. He's already out. He's already out. He's already out. So then we, um, just before our last few seconds here of the show, we also just have to briefly mention Michael Cohen and the subpoena. For him to testify and so how he's being threatened and his father-in-law and they're all saying oh i haven't threatened anybody but trump with his own mouth said to and i can't remember the judge whatever her name is on fox news um and you, you can hear trump say that he that his father you know you really should be looking into his father-in-law because he's the one that's the criminal that's the one that everybody really wants to look at he's the money of the family yeah. with his own so mouth, you'll see the said, timing of this kind of sync up yeah, oh, yeah. February 15th, that deadline for this reopening. Right. And Michael Cohen being subpoenaed and will testify before he goes to jail. Right. In early March. Right. So we'll see how we see a distraction of the distraction take place. Distractions of the distractions. I've been thinking about that yeah. all week since you said that yeah. last week. So we'll so see many. how those start to play out with each other. We're out of time. Cynthia, thank you so much for coming. Thank and you, Tim. Nice to see you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. I'm Tim Apicella here with Cynthia Lee Sinclair. <laughs> this is Trump Week, and we'll see you next Friday.